Hello and welcome back. So in this video, we are going to look at the one additional operation um, apart from convolution uh, that is done in a uh, CNN convolutional neural network. So we looked at convolutions and uh, you know slided convolutions, different types of convolutions. Now we are going to look at uh, the X one other operation called max pooling, which also forms um, an integral part of CNN. Uh, it's not that widely used anymore, but um, can be used for uh, downsampling at least. I will see that in the next few slides. So if you have a feature map uh, as shown here, if you have a feature map as shown here, and um, this is basically one feature map from a sequence of feature maps. And if you want to downsample it, uh, in order for that you get um, a slightly subsampled version of it, then you can do what is called the max pooling where you choose um, um, you know n cross n or k cross k regions of the input and choose the maximum value in there. So as you, you see from go from left to right, see you uh, see this uh, in this uh, high region I have, I have drawn, I have highlighted the maximum value is 6 that that goes to the output. Here uh, you have another region, you have um, 8 as the output and in this region you have 3 and in another region you have 4 as the, out, as the output because they correspond to the maximum inside that 2 cross 2 region. So you usually do this as a k cross k max pooling, okay. So which, um, which basically means that you look at a k cross k neighborhood and find the maximum value in that neighborhood, okay. And you can also do that with a stride, okay. That means that you can, so in this case it's done with a stride of, uh, stride of 2. That's how you get the the uh, reduction in uh, <coughs> what do you call the subsampling effect, reduction in the size of the feature map. If you can also do it to the side of one where you won't get the um, you know as much as a drop in the resolution, uh, but you, it has some other purpose. So basically, what this does is make the network slightly translational invariant. We will see how that works. So first purpose, if you do with a stride, uh, it helps definitely helps in uh, reducing the uh, size of the network. So you can treat it like a filter. The other one is that it makes um, to some extent the uh, network translation invariant at least to smaller translations. So we'll see how that works in the next. So um, we we'll look at how max pooling uh, helps with translational invariance to a certain degree by looking at it you know from a, a typical you know the typical 1D kind of input not the 2D for that we have for images. So if we look at the image um, at the um, at the bottom first okay. So there's two stages. One is, uh, you know, before we do max pooling, this is the output. This is called the detection stage. Okay, and um, so um, the, from the detector stage, basically that's the output from let's say a convolution, and we are going to do this max pooling. So if you look at this max pooling stage, so um, so for instance, this output, this is the output of uh, max pooling, uh, it takes this input from three neurons. Here are three hidden active units here, and um, so it turns out we're not one is not shown. So let's say the output is 0.3. That's the maximum. So this max moving, it's one cross three max pooling, right? So if you look at these three, uh, if you look at this particular uh, uh, hidden unit, which is the output of max, this is the pooling stage, then this takes its input from like these three units. So the output maximum is one. Okay. Similarly, if you consider this unit, this takes its input from a combination of um, a different ideas. So here, these three. So that's also the maximum again is one. Similarly, for the last one for here, consider three. There's one here which is not shown. Here, once again, the maximum is one, assuming that the one that's not shown is smaller than one. Okay. So if you see, if you're just doing one cross three max pooling, um, in this case, uh, the stride of one, we are not skipping anything. So uh, the resolution is maintained. On the other hand, if you look at the picture on top, where we have shifted the inputs to the pooling layer to the left. So this particular um, layer here has been shifted to the left by one unit. Okay. So which means that again, once again, there is something here, which I think is 0.1, uh, say is 0.1, it come in here, 0.2 moves here. So this moved there. 1 moved here, 0 0.1 moved there and this moved outside, okay. So now once you look at this um, output, right, um, and you do the polling, right, if you do the polling, you see that still, right, uh, for these two especially outputs remain the same. 
so this is what i meant by invariance to translation okay so regardless of uh, the shift these two outputs still the maximum in this so this layer these activations did not change they still remain one for if you if you apply max pooling that remains so if you look at the bottom almost all of the units have changed their value um and compared to the bottom here after shifting but the pooling in the pooling layer only two values have changed so the basically 50% of the values became unchanged so with small um, you know uh, translations the output is unchanged so that really helps okay there's another way to do pooling which is across channels okay and um, so that means that for every filter there's an output and if you do max pooling across different outputs of different features um then you know there are some um, invariances that we can get uh, you know for instance rotations for instance okay so that can also be solved so we'll look at that okay let's see how uh, we can do max pooling across uh, feature maps right so the previous uh, version we saw it's max pooling only in uh, in a layer in that in the for a for a 2d convolution neural network it's it's ba it's basically a, in a, in a feature map you are looking at two cross two regions the one day example we saw we looked at one cross three regions right so if we if we consider let's say uh, some task like where you are trying to do digit recognition then we will we'll consider uh, the network which has learned three filters so these are the filters okay it has learned and um, for you know this for the sake of argument these are the same size as the input let's say we give this input image 5 of the number 5 then you know that this particular filter here it's going to have the maximum response okay so each of them will give a feature map okay the feature map output i'm just going to draw very crudely here so the leftmost feature map will have some you know if you look treat it like a cross correlation this will have um, you know very large um, activation here others might not be so large everywhere there might have be some partial overlap especially at these you know corners but they'll be very small okay something like this i'm going to going to shade them so that you know it's it's kind of all over the place but this has a very large activation here and if we do max pooling across let's see max pooling across these feature maps over small regions okay then you know we still have a very ma maximum activation corresponding to the numeral 5 similarly if you look at these three uh, if you look at uh, this uh, particular diagram here if you have input which is oriented in a different way then this filter will give maximum output right so if you draw these filters i know like um, you know let's it's, it can be just one point too but i'm just going to draw it like a so you have very maximum activation here the other two might have you know spread out low intensity activation because of a partial overlap okay but once again the activation due to numeral 5 will be very high here so this particular activation map can then be used for um, recognition digit recognition in downstream layers okay so if you do this max pooling across layers of course you have to decide what is the size across which you want to do pooling etc but those are hyperparameters that you have to study so even in this context you know cross channel pooling in this case uh, depending on the filters learned it gives you invariance to rotations so it's minor rotations not large rotations but minor rotations and also depending on what the network has learned